Hi everyone, so today we want to look at how to effectively apply and analyze diagrams when it comes to exam style questions which could ask you for diagrams or it may even just be adding and applying and analyzing a diagram in an essay. So let's have a look. So first and foremost, super important to understand guys, why do we do diagrams in essays? Well, diagrams can actually help you in two areas of the 25 mark essays particularly. So if you are doing an essay and you're thinking, how can I perhaps improve my application marks as well as analysis marks? Because remember, in 25 markers, application usually gets up to four marks and analysis can get you somewhere around seven or eight marks according to the exam board of course as well so diagrams helps in this regard because firstly applying and using a diagram and putting it into context will get you application mark because you're applying that economic idea and that principle of um, demand and supply for instance but then secondly it will also accrue up to analysis, uh, accrue analysis marks as well. It can gain you analytical marks because what you do is when you apply and draw the diagram in your essay, you will then be analyzing it according to the context of the question. So you will be explaining and analyzing the situation that has arisen due to the fact that you have put in this particular diagram. So why is it important? Because it can get you marks not only for application, but also for analysis so that's why guys we do diagrams in 25 mark essays uh, as well and it's not just 25 mark essays think of things like 15 markers right 15 markers can also uh, you know you can put a diagram also in a 15 marker and that can gain you application and also analysis marks as well so it's not just all oh, 25 mark essays it's other areas as well other questions that you can bring it in potentially uh, as well but let's have a look at the 25 mark essay side of things let's see how we can effectively utilize a diagram in an essay right guys so an awesome way to kind of explain and analyze points in an essay um, could be to use a diagram so to apply a relevant diagram in the answer and then you analyze it according to the question right so let's have a look at a certain scenario and then let's have a look at a diagram as well so um, I've got a diagram just drawn up there um, and then we've got the scenario playing out at the bottom as well. OK, now the scenario says there will be a shift in demand due to rising consumer income. So there will be a rise in consumer income. And as a result, there's a shift in the demand. OK, um, and that makes sense because what happens is if there are more disposable income in a certain given you know, society, uh, what will happen is that there will be more demand of that good as well, because people have more money, they will spend more money on that particular um, good or service. So um, now it depends, of course, the context that you guys are kind of linking it back to. But let's say you have an exam question, an essay perhaps, where it's talking about there could be um, changes in the demand level, right? Demand or output level um, for a certain firm, for a certain business. OK, so in that situation, you can say there could be a shift in the demand curve based on a rising consumer income. And remember, guys, why is there a shift of the demand curve from original to a new curve? The, one of the reasons is, of course, um, consumer income increases, but it's anything beside price. OK, so if anything beside price um, has a relationship to demand being uh, changed, then that's shifting demand. Whereas if it's non price related, if it is price related, then it will be a movement um, upon that demand curve itself okay by itself but if it is non-price related such as consumer income because that's not price related um, to the good then there will be a shift of the demand curve right so in this context a person could say um, in your essay in your exam there is a shift in the demand curve due to rising consumer income and you showcase that using the diagram and what we've drawn here is a demand and supply diagram so you have your original point just here okay so original equilibrium is at pqds so there's p there is q that's the demand curve that's the original supply curve okay now what you can do here there on is to shift the demand curve and which way do you shift it? Because if there is a rise in consumer income, people have more disposable income, they will start spending in the economy. And that means the demand curve will shift rightwards and that will be displayed by an increase in quantity of that particular good. So therefore, there will be a shift towards the right 
So it will move from that equilibrium point to the new equilibrium point just there. So the new equilibrium point is at P1, Q1, D1, S. So there we are, P1, Q1, D1, and the supply curve remains the same because the scenario is talking to us about demand and not supply. What we can say, however, is that there is an increase in supply from the original equilibrium towards the new equilibrium in order to meet the new demand levels. OK, so that's your application. And in terms of your analysis, you can refer to making a statement. It's, it's not really a statement of such. It's more about explaining the diagram. What is happening, guys? What is happening in the diagram? So as we can see, currently, well, currently it was P, Q, D and S at the original equilibrium level. However, due to a rising consumer income, it has shifted the demand curve to the new equilibrium at P1, Q1, D1 and S, resulting in a increase in quantity. So we can see that the quantity has shifted rightwards. OK, so the quantity of that particular good or service has increased. And this is how you are annotating your answer or analyzing the answer um, in terms of the application from the application of the diagram. So you draw the diagram and then you put the context in and you explain the shifts and the movements and why they have occurred. And in this situation, it's because of a rising consumer income that has resulted in quantity increasing from Q to Q1. OK, um, now you'll notice also that the price has also gone up. So that's something else you can also annotate um, and explain in your answer, uh, if you like, is that with quantity increasing from Q to Q1, there's also a simultaneous increase in prices from P to P1. OK, um, and that's because, of course, because you know individuals have got consumers have got more money, they are willing to spend into the economy and that's shifting um, the demand upwards but also creating inflation, which could be actually used as evaluation here uh, as well in this sense, because what's happening, it is causing causing something called demand pull inflation is pulling up the price levels because of an increase in demand. OK, so this is a scenario. That's your diagram. You draw the diagram and then you apply or you analyze the situation, the scenario. What's happening? Don't just one exam tip I will give everyone is that don't just drop in a diagram without annotating, without explaining, without analysing the diagram itself. Definitely do not do that because you're not really going to get any um, analysis marks at all. Application marks, I mean, will you really get application marks just by dropping in a diagram and without telling us what's happening in the diagram? Probably not, right? So for that reason, guys, super important. If you want to get those application and analysis marks that we've what, that we've already talked about, earlier you must make sure you label correctly okay and then you talk about and analyze the diagram as well um, in terms of what's going on and how is it linked back to the question which is very important as well so uh, just a reminder make sure when you are doing the um, di diagram you are labeling it right so you have price in this context quantity there you've got your um, labelings and everything else correct and then you analyze it in terms of what's going on. And you can refer to words like original equilibrium point, the new equilibrium point, and then the cause and behind what was why has it happened? What's the reason behind it all? And you explain that as well. And by the way, and like I said earlier, you can evaluate it as well. You can evaluate and get evaluation marks crucially from the application of the diagram. So you can suggest, you know what, even though there is quantity increase in this situation, there is prices going up, so it may not be favorable to those well off, less well off, for example. So could it create a bigger disparity between um, the less well off in society and the more well off in society? So could it create more inequality is another interesting question to be posed in this scenario as well. So with this, guys, hopefully it's giving you an idea. So you put the diagram in correctly labeled and then you annotate it what is happening here and you put a paragraph almost there um, a separate paragraph or a paragraph within your answer regarding what is happening in the diagram and you refer to these points um, as well 
Okay, so with that, guys, hopefully now it's much more clear why it's important. Firstly, to apply and analyze because uh, diagrams because it can get you marks. And secondly, some ideas of how you can potentially embed that into your answers, um, particularly essays uh, as well. So with that, guys, I wish you all the very best.